All right, guys. So we're going to go check out a collection of Magic the Gathering cards. We're driving out to Ann Arbor, Michigan um, to check out a collection of vintage Magic cards. This stuff ranges from, like, unlimited up through. Um, it looks like there's some newer stuff, but the, the bulk of it, it looked like it was unlimited through, like, uh, Weatherlight, Mirage, that era. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Magic the Gathering, it is a collectible card game. Um, it's been around since, like, 93. Um, and it's been going strong ever since. I used to play in high school. Um, I stopped playing when I was in the Marine Corps, probably around 98, I would say I got out of Magic the Gathering um, the first time. And they always say, Magic the Gathering never lets go. You get out and then you end up getting back in. Um, and that was the case with us. Uh, it was kind of funny how we got back into it. For those of you who don't know, we got into this whole store reselling, you know, selling stuff online and now it's grown to where we're actually gonna have a physical location through Magic the Gathering. That's how we got started. We were trying to raise funds for an adoption, which obviously we were successful in. We have two beautiful children. Um, and, uh, you know, how it happened was basically my parents were throwing a fundraiser for us, and a couple of my buddies from high school came in. They, they donated a bunch of Magic the Gathering cards. Now, like I said, this was back in 2013, so I hadn't played Magic the Gathering or even looked at the Magic the Gathering cards since 1998, I want to say. I want to say it was like Stronghold was the last set um, of Magic that I had bought. And I had sold my collection probably early 2000s. Um, just, it was just taking up space, carrying it around with me, whatever. Uh, so I got this collection from my friends. And I started going through the cards. And keep in mind, I haven't seen these cards in years. Everything was different. These were sets I didn't recognize. There was some stuff from the era that I was playing that I did recognize. And I was like, okay, cool. This is a, a good card. And then I go look it up. I was like, oh, no, this card's not worth anything anymore. It used to be 25 bucks. Now it's, you know, 25 cents. You know, they were like, dang it. So they had to reprint some of these cards, and the prices went down. But regardless, um, they got us started on this whole thing, like these magic cards. And, and like, being able to remember having the magic cards, like the art on these things and everything, just kind of brought me back in time. So, again, like I said, it, it was something that I wanted to start doing. So we started branching out into toys and, and other retro stuff because that feeling you get when you have something that you had when you were a kid, you know, when you were younger, can bring you back in time to a simpler time in your life. It was just, it was amazing. So I wanted to do that and start like spreading that and start being able to, to sell these things and uh, get, you know, go find these collections and get them out there to people who would have that same kind of, like just, I guess, appreciation the same way I did for these things. So anyways, guys, we're going to check out this collection. Um, I'll show you what we find. Hopefully we can strike a deal and then we'll go. All right, guys, so we picked up the collection. We were able to strike a deal. We got um, some magic cards. Small stack of comic books, nothing super exciting, and um, some GURPS role-playing books and a few other role-playing books um, in the deal. So we're heading back, and we will go through this stuff when we get inside, and I'll show you what we got. All right, guys, so we made it back, and here's what we picked up. I'll show you what we have here. So these are all magic cards. Lots of magic cards. We have some more down here. Um, we do have, like I said, we have a bunch of these role-playing manuals. We have a bunch of GURPS, Deadlands, and there's one D&D &D, um, module in there. There was some newer stuff. Um, not much of it, much of it's older, but, uh, there was like the Born of the Gods, and I think he had, I think one of these was just like M19 stuff, but here's some of the cooler stuff here. We do have some sealed Fallen Empires booster packs. There's 44 of those, and they're all sealed. And then we have a couple sealed Weatherlight booster packs. There's 18 of those. And then we have a sealed Weatherlight booster box. It's actually in really nice shape. Then you can see we have these two, uh, trading card Tackle boxes, I guess. Those are all filled with magic cards. We have some more magic, more magic. Oh, this right here. Hermit Druid's gone up in price since it was uh, originally released. So I, I want to say it's around 10 bucks now. But unfortunately, this one has been glued to the top of this box. I don't know what this card is. It's upside down. Maybe I'll try to tear it off and see. Uh, hopefully it's nothing super expensive. And then we do have a couple of little stacks of comic books here. Most of them are uh, 90s era. But there was a couple older ones. Um, we'll go through those here as well. But anyways, guys. Let's get to it. We'll start with the uh, the comics and the GURPS, and then we'll kind of go through some of the magic stuff. All right, so let's start with the comics, and I'll be the first one to put this out there that I'm not super big into comics anymore. Um, so I'm going to have to look up all these. There's one issue I know that was uh, the first appearance of Vision, but other than that, the rest of this stuff, I'm not sure if there's anything that's going to be any key issues. Most of it's newer stuff. Like, Well, I say newer stuff, but stuff that I would have been buying when I was a kid. And most of them are not in good condition. But again, like I said, they were a throw-in with the collection. So they have one Nintendo Power in there. A couple cracked magazines. And again, these are not in really great shape, like I said. 
Got Venom Lethal Protector. It's just a bunch of that kind of stuff. You know, I'm not going to go through every single one. Um, but we'll, we'll flip through them really quick if you guys want to see them. There were a couple of older issues that were like the um, 25 cent comics. Like A lot of the covers are falling off on these. X-Men Classics, I actually had this one. I remember these when these just came out back in the 90s. Like There was all the holograms and there was the embossed covers and all this stuff. And Back then they you know, went for a little bit of money. People were starting to buy those up. But again, it was a fad and it kind of fell to the wayside. And I don't think those really have any value or any meaningful value i should say Dishman. that one has graffiti on it demon so here's deadpool so i don't know if that's worth anything i don't know if that's his first standalone comic like i said guys i'm not a big comic book guy um i know the first comic he appeared in is worth a couple hundred dollars which is a uh, new mutants 94 i want to say i can't remember the exact issue marvel tales Uh, let's see. Who is Hawkeye? What if, is this the first of, appearance of Hawkeye? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look. I'll set that one aside and take a look through that. Yeah, Secret Wars. Now, I know the Secret Wars were the first appearance of Venom. Um, is it Secret Wars 8, I think, or 4 or something? I don't remember. So we got some older stuff. What's that, the Bronze Era again? Not a big comic book uh, guy. I like comic books. I like reading them. So this I do know is the first appearance of Vision. Uh, it's not in the best shape. It has like a chunk missing out of the back. But still, that's a that's a neat book. It's a key book. Um, got Archangel there. Dread rules. Like a Disney comic, some Image stuff. I remember when Image first came out when I was uh, younger. Those comics were shooting through the roof. And then they kind of fell back to Earth. So there's some older stuff. I mean, not super old, but I know there's a couple 35-cent books here. There's a 30-cent. Ninja Turtles. Yeah, like I said, these were not stored or kept very well. It's like hard to pick them up without ruining them even more. These came with the toys, the Spawn toys that came out in the 90s. Gargoyles, that was an awesome cartoon. The toys were pretty cool too. Zen Intergalactic Ninja. Like this one looks like it got wet at some point. Ninja Turtles 3. Some Disney. So yeah, nothing super exciting in here, guys. Like I said, I'm going to have to look up those other... You know, I'll have to go through and look all these up, to be honest. I mean, it's just not really something I follow anymore. I have tons of comics. Like, I have all the stuff that I had when I was a kid. Um, and then my sister... Or my sister... My sister's wife, I was going to say. My wife's brother um, gave us all his comics at one point. But again, that's all stuff kind of from the 90s. Flip through these real quick. And if you see something in here, guys, that jumps out, you're like, oh, that's something to hold on to. Let me know. So we have some Thundercats there. Ninja Turtles, there's Bone. Never heard of Argus. Avengers. Maximum Carnage. Now, I know the first appearance of Carnage just started creeping up. I don't think that's in here, though. Some more Thundercats. Yeah, these were just basically look like they were just red and kind of. Thrown in a shoebox, maybe. I remember buying this one when I was a kid. It's funny, like, looking at somebody, it's like, I remember that cover, I remember buying that book. Like, I remember this one. Some more 
Avengers, Captain America. What was your favorite comic? If you read comics as a kid or still do, what's your favorite character? I always loved Spider-Man. And actually, I, I used to really like Darkhawk and uh, Sleepwalker. I remember when those first came out, their, their first issues came out when I was uh, younger. So here's an older Iron Man. That's a 30 cent issue. It doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape. Another older Iron Man book. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I really like Darkhawk and uh, Sleepwalker. I remember when they came out, and maybe it was because it was the, you know, the first issues came out so I could follow their story from the very beginning without having to go through all the older issues. But yeah, those guys, and then um, definitely Spider-Man was up there as my favorite. I really wasn't big into DC Comics. More or less, I'd buy the, um, the Marvel stuff. Court Martial of Yellow Jacket. No! Ghost Rider is pretty cool. And last but not least, we have this one. All right, guys, so let's go through the uh, the role-playing stuff. Like I said, there's only one Dungeons & Dragons mo module, and it's the, uh, the Isle of Dread here. That's back before it was Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, and then went back to Dungeons & Dragons later. But um, Deadlands, this is kind of like a Wild West-themed um, role-playing game. I've never played this. I played Dungeons & Dragons uh, back in my younger days, and then um, I should say Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. I think it was second edition is when I really started playing. And then, um, oh, what was the other one? Vampire, the Masquerade. So, I'm not super familiar with this, but they are pretty cool. The art is neat, that's for sure. So, have you played Deadlands? Is it any good? Let me know. The next ones here are, um, it's called GURPS. And they're just a bunch of different, uh, again, this is another one I've never played. Um, but there's a lot of them. And, um, pretty neat, really. I mean, it looks like they have a bunch of different, like, books for playing um like different kind of themes like dinosaurs camelot now i don't know if these are usable with D D or if these are just if it's a standalone game again like like i said a lot of these a lot of these games are just out there that i've never really played and i'm not familiar with but uh sometimes you buy a collection of something you do know and deal with and you find something that you know gets tossed in and you have to learn about it Herbs. Sounds like some kind of digestional, digestional. I can't say that word. No, it sounds like some kind of digestional issue. I still probably didn't say that right. Gerbs Japan. Let's see here. We have, yeah, they got pretty neat artwork in these. I really like the artwork on the old D and D stuff, and the old magic cards and all that stuff. So we have uh, the Gerbs Martial Arts. If you want to be a pirate, you can uh, be a GURPS swashbuckler. You got the Ultra Tech here. Espionage. Man, their faces look really, really thin, don't they? I don't know. I can't draw that good, so I shouldn't be talking. Then we have a uh, Space Beastery. Just kind of look all the different creatures, I guess, from outer space. We have GURPS China. Cyberpunk. That looks like Professor X. Like he's hooked into Cerebro. Uh, we have GURPS Imperial Rome. We have GURPS the Aztecs. Good God, that poor lady. She's like, let me out of here. I'm so sad. Oh, he's going to steal my pincushion. Okay. And then we have Cyberworld. I've been trying to talk Red into getting that haircut. The mohawk look. Never going to happen. She could pull it off. Biotech, the next step in human evolution. I thought I was the next step in human evolution, but guess not. We have Reign of Steel. See, this is why you don't trespass. This is why you pay attention to these signs. Because they have killer robots that are coming to get you. Then we have regular robots. Oh, there's two of those. Two robot GURPS. And the Age of Gods and Heroes, Ancient Greece GURPS. So again, guys, GURPS, not really my thing. Um, not really something I'm super familiar with but um i wanted to go through them real quick to show you guys what was part of this collection and now let's go to the bread and butter the magic cards that's the stuff that i know uh, that's what got us started on this entire thing so uh let's go through that stuff and show you what we got all right guys so let's work through some of this magic collection like i showed you initially we do have this weatherlight sealed booster box so this is really cool this is uh this is supposed to be like that that's how they sealed these back in the, the day there 
But that's in really nice shape. I'm really happy with that. I like that a lot. I like it a lot. And then, let's go through these real quick because we just showed them. But um, we have a bunch of the Fallen Empires uh, booster packs. There's only eight in there. I think they upped it. What's it now? 12? 12 cards per pack? And then we have some more of the uh, Weatherlight booster packs with the old steel golem there on the cover. Around the front of the package. So he said they just would do drafts, and that's why they had some of these opened, and then the one that was unopened. He said there was one Homelands pack, and they ended up opening it up to see if they could get a, a Dergeradu, Digverdu, whatever that card's called. Alright, so here's the um, more valuable stuff. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of rares in here. There's a lot of like um, 5 to 10 to $15 cards. But some, this is some of the um, higher end stuff that we had. So let's go through this. And uh, those GURPS books, guys, those will probably be listed here on our eBay store or on our website, sergeantreds.com, here in the near future. Um, a lot of these Magic cards will be as well um, on our TCG store. So I'll I'll go ahead and list that stuff in the comment or in the comments in the um, description there. So we have this from Living Plains uh, from Legends. So a lot of these are going to be moderately played. This this collection has a lot of uh, played stuff. This is they. Just had them to play with. You know what they're what that's what they're meant for, right? Magic cards are meant to be played with. So we have Ristic Study. I'm shocked this has not tanked in value with a couple of reprints that they've had. But there's several of those. We do have some unlimited. So we have Meekstone from Unlimited. We got Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. Aliabaras Carpet. And Final Fortune from Mirage. So for those of you who are, aren't familiar with Magic cards, basically you could tell the set by this symbol here. So that, that palm tree tells me it's from Mirage. Um, and there's other sets that might have the same symbol, but I'll, that's another video for another day. Um, but we have Ori, Ori York Champion. Some of the cards I just can't pronounce. Land Tax. No Mercy. Prismatic Omen. Necropotence couple of those and we have a fifth edition necropotence so again you can tell here um this is the reprint from fifth edition and it, the way you can tell a fifth edition is from down here it's 90, 1997 copyright but the ice age one has the um the snowflake as its set symbol and we have a couple copies of entomb we have tooth and nail contamination so like i said i started getting into magic i guess it was the tail end of unlimited um revised era probably mainly revised honestly um so a lot of this stuff I remember buying, you know, Tempest and uh, Weatherlight and all that. Like, I was out of it after. I want to say Stronghold was the last set I bought. So, like, Fifth Dawn and, and cards, like, from that era, I didn't really buy any of that. New. So we have an unlimited uh, Mana Flare there. There's another Entomb. Got some Worldly Tutors. So here's another example for those non-Magic uh, folk out there. Mirage and then a Classic 6th Edition. But yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff in here. A lot of reserve list stuff. Um, a lot of stuff that's, you know, been going up in value just because a lot of the older cards I think people are starting to appreciate more and there's not as many of them. And Wizards of the Coast said they're not going to reprint them. So if they stick to that, they'll probably just keep creeping up in value. Got some Scorched Runes. I think the newest set he said that when he was really getting into magic was um, the Zendikar block. But like I said, there is some other new stuff they would play here and there. We got Suchi, Sushi, Suchi, Cabal Coffers. So we have Nicole Bolas from Legends. Here's a foil uh, Cloudstone Curio. Imprison. So this is one of the cards that Wizards of the Coast banned um, because of the, the art on it. Or several of those that uh, I guess it was late last year. They did that too. Here's a Peminzora foil. We have Fork from Revised. Preacher. A couple of City of Shadows. Cyclonic Rift. We have a play set of that. Grave Pacts. We got some Squandered Resources. Phyrexian Tower. Curse Totem. We got Mold Demon. That art's pretty crazy, huh? I love the old art on these cards. Like the newer stuff, the art's good, don't get me wrong, but this old stuff is just like this is what I grew up with. This is what I remember. Like Swarm Yard, it's cool looking and all. But it's no it's no season of the witch. 
So we got a Demonic Tutor here. This is from Revise. This thing's in... Like I said, most of these are, you know, moderate to heavy play. There's in light play. Not too much near mint stuff in here. But that's fine. I mean, if you're playing with them, you want to save a little bit of money. We got Sensei's Top. Hellfire. That's cool art right there, too. So back in the 90s, a lot of these cards... Um, like that Demonic Tutor, there were parent groups that were up in arms about it, having a pentagram and all that. So they just uh, either changed the art or stopped making them for a while. And they ended up reprinting them within the last couple of years. Look at this guy. That's me. Hey guys, have you seen my pants? Like Falling Star. Alluren. Enlightened Tutor. Gate to Phyrexia. That's pretty cool. We got telekinesis sylvan library that's pretty cool art i like that art palancron got a couple of those copy artifact intuition and a couple of wheel of fortune so this just spiked heavy guys this thing i don't think it's gonna stick it's spiked up to what like 1500 bucks i i can't see wheel of fortune being more valuable than all the dual lands and revised so um couple of those in there let's go through another couple boxes all right so let's keep going here we have send triplets we have a foil counterbalance it's actually a really nice foiling and for as old as this is it's not really pringled some of the new sets as soon as you open them up like you could probably set them there and just like watch them curl yeah martyrs cry demonic consultation all of bandit lord we got Ivory Tower here from the Antiquity set. Little Urza. The Peacekeeper. Lord of the Pit. That card, man, that was that was just cool back in the day. And this one is uh unlimited from the unlimited set. I think there's a couple of revised. So I'll, if I could if one of the revised is in here, I'll show you the way you can tell the difference, or one of the ways, for those of you who are new to magic. Uh, basically, it's the the darkness of the card. Like it's a lot richer color. And um it's hard to tell on the black card, but the the uh, name of the artist is, is a little different in the way it's situated there. So Time Elemental. Crack Clan Ironworks. Two of those. Mana Echoes. we got a Brain Geyser. Snap Silver. Braid of Fire. I mean, just a lot of cool little cards. Um, got a couple Bops. Birds of Paradise. Undiscovered Paradise. Lots of Paradise going on. That's in that little handful. we got Shallow Grave. Forbidden Orchard, Paradigm Shift. I mean, just a ton of cool, like, just classic cards. This has been reprinted a couple times, but it's still, still in my mind, that's one of the uh, iconic cards of Magic. That's Lords of the Undead. Soul Ring. That's awesome. I love the art on that. Goblin Bomb. A lot of stuff from that, like, kind of early era of Magic. You know, you have a lot of stuff from Homelands. Visions, Mirage. Another Bop. But yeah, I mean, there's some there's some classic cards in here, guys. And for those of you who don't really play Magic or know Magic, it's it's actually a really fun game. I mean, uh, the newer the newer version of it, not newer version, but the, the newer cards can be a little more complicated if you're new to it, but I like the old stuff. Because it was a lot more, a lot less complicated in my opinion. That's awesome. I love the art on Eater of the Dead. That's really cool. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to pickaxe right there, bro. You're about to get it. It's an original. Uh, oh, that's in French. Juan Le Trisquil as Pois Anjou Metz Trois Marque. I'm not going to even try. Pendrel Mists. There's a Planeswalker. A couple of cards from Commander. So what do you think, guys? Is anyone, if you, do you play Magic? If, you, if you're one of the people that sub subscribe to the channel or watch the channel that are, you know, more into the toys and stuff, did you ever play Magic? Ever wanted to get into it or just kind of like, eh? Not not my bag. Not my cup of tea. I mean, there's just a ton of good cards in here, guys. 
and even in even in moderate light play condition they're still you know they're still worth money they're still valuable people want to play with them and they don't like i said like i said they don't want to necessarily spend the big bucks for one that's in mint condition you can still have the card to play with and you know not spend a small fortune so a couple cities of brass that's really good art i love that art too just something about the old art it's just i don't know i really like it vexing shusher shh ghost way a debt of loyalty kind of sticking all the old cards off to the side here black vice so that's from unlimited one of the ways you can tell what the artifacts is this one says continuous artifact if it was from a newer set it would just say artifact so you have mono and continuous artifacts um as you can see there yeah i've really haven't played magic in a while i probably haven't played in a couple years but i still love the game still enjoy the art on the cards i mean I love these older cards, though. Really neat. First rare I ever opened. Force of Nature. Swamp Thing looking dude. Awesome card. Not necessarily awesome to play with, but at the time it was awesome. So this guy is this guy. Different art. It's a Feldegraph. That's actually, uh, was it uh, Richard Garfield? It's Garfield PhD, I think, um mixed up what's it called an amalgam i can't remember what that's called some lotus petals unmask and there's a wrath of god so all right i'm gonna grab one of these boxes that i haven't gone through yet like i said i didn't go through everything um you just kind of pointed me in the direction of the more expensive cards so maybe there's some other stuff in here we'll find out i'm gonna grab let's see this one was this was the ye old stale fish box it's funny, like, you always find magic cards. And I always have, like, I call it magic art graffiti. Alright, what do we have here? We have Struts, Flan... We have, um... We have Flashy, guys. For real, though. And, uh, let's see, we have Struts here. We have Struts. Let's go through... I'm gonna go through this one, the checkerboard. I'll probably spend the rest of my evening going through Magic Card Collection. This Magic Card Collection and seeing what's in here and kind of get it sorted and listed and all that. There's some cool art in here. I always appreciate the art I find with these these older collections, especially. I've noticed there's always, like, someone doodling on something or sketching um, or whatever. So I'm not going to go through all these. I'm just going to kind of flip through some of them and see what kind of stuff we have. So we have some stuff in Prophecy, Visions. Well, Ponder's not a bad card, eh? kind of pluck out anything that jumps out at me but a lot of these is just going to probably be like the bulk stuff battle screech was up there for a little bit a couple bucks so well wisher i mean these are, a lot of these are staple cards that sell really well they're just not super expensive which is fine you know not every card can be a hundred dollar card so I know I always say it, but same thing goes with the toys. You know, the bread and butter isn't going to be the super expensive cards. It's going to be selling a large quantity of the, the lower valued ones. Because more more decks are made up with, you know, cards with the ha that have lesser value than ones that are going to be made up. Of, you're not going to get a deck that's got all $100 cards. I mean, I guess you could. I don't know, some, some foils mixed in here. Ooh, that one's in rough shape. Yeah, I don't think these guys played with sleeves, which is unfortunate. So yeah, you have you have a good good mix of cards from good different uh, mix of sets there. So I won't be surprised to find a couple more uh, a couple more gems in this lot, but for now, I think that's gonna be it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and go through the rest of this stuff and. Uh, see what we can find and if i find anything super exciting i'll do a little follow-up on it but how from beyond this old art man this is just this brings me back so all right guys well that's that you know we got the little magic collection we got the um the comic books and the role-playing games 
So let me know what your favorite item out of this collection was. Um, you know, if you're a comic book person, I'm sure it's the comics, but... Oh, heck, let's go through one more. Let's go, let's, let's, let's peek through one more of these. I can't help myself. This one says Remand. Okay, so these ones look newer. Well, it's Homelands. These ones don't look like they're in as rough shape. Sometimes you can just look at the side and see what they, uh, see what they are. Oh, that's a... There's some rares there. These are in sleeves. Let's see what these are. Guess I did use some sleeves. That's a sledge. Okay, so someone was drawing on that to make a proxy card, probably, for their other behemoth sledge. I found, though, like, sometimes a card will be not worth anything, and someone will draw on it, and it's like, no, you just drew on a $50 card! Because it's like that um, hermit drew it on there. They glued to that box. Yeah, nothing super exciting in there. All right, let's go through one more little uh, portion. Let me zoom out a little bit, guys. Put that back where I found it. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go through this little handful and see what we got. We got some plane shift, um, some invasion. Yeah, I think we're going to find some staples in here, man. We're going to find some decent cards uh, tucked away in here. A foil, yeah. I mean, something's like, you know, you're going to have some cards in here that are they're not really bulk, you know? 50 cent cards, it adds up. There's a couple of rares right there. Frantic Search, it's a good seller for us. So here's one of the ones where I was talking about. You have that Legends logo, and it's uh, got a whiteboard. That's the reprint from Chronicles. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get to it and go uh, search through this stuff in a little bit better uh, detail. But I just wanted to share with what share with you guys what we found and uh, go through some of it with you guys. I'm obviously not going to go through all these cards. There's got to be a sheet. There's a lot of them. All right, guys. Well, there we go. That's, uh, that's that. I'll go through the rest of this stuff, and uh, hopefully we find some more gems. But uh, as always, guys, make sure you hit that notification bell. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and... Uh, Leave us a comment and let us know what you think. We'll catch you next time.